Carlos Alberto Tevez is one of his generation's finest talents. Travelling from his homeland of Argentina to Brazil, England, Italy and even China, the local boy achieved legend status at Boca Juniors before retiring in June 2022 at the age of 38. Famous for his wand of a right foot and dogged on-pitch determination, El Apache was well known also for his ability to stir up a storm. Whether it be personal or professional, his record has many marks, but the weirdness and wildness of his character peaked while spending his 20s in England. Starting fresh in a new continent, East London was the setting of his ultimate controversy, but how did it happen? By the summer of 2006, fresh off the back of the World Cup in Germany and only 19 months into Sao Paulo life, Tevez had already seen some success. Captaining Corinthians through a title-winning season and boasting 20 goals personally to be named the league's best player, all was seemingly smooth until mid-August. Vague reports arose about Tevez's discontent, with his issues stemming from the club's hierarchy, and the skipper flew back to Argentina, justifying his withdrawal by claiming they had made a broken promise and that in order for him to return, changes must be made. These demands weren't met, and by the 23rd, news of his refusal to play for Timau hit England. A week passed before on his website the Argentine confirmed that both he and club compatriot Javier Mascherano had signed for West Ham United. Ambiguity surrounded the double transfer, particularly for Tevez, whose signature had been on the wish list of much more favourable juggernauts like Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man United and AC Milan. The club, however, didn't elaborate, specifying only that they had signed permanent contracts for an undisclosed fee, arousing suspicion from the off. As for the how and why, this is where Iranian businessman Kievesh Gurabchin and Media Sports Investment are introduced. MSI were an international investment fund founded by Gurabchin, who back in 2004 had bought a 51% stake in Corinthians, giving them control of the club for a decade. To pay off debts, MSI invested funds directly into the club, for which they claimed the economic rights of some players signed during their reign, including the Argentine duo. Simply put, West Ham were not purchasing, but borrowing their services from a third-party agent. This was prohibited by Rule U18, an old law of the English top flight which limited the power of a third party. But the club's breach of this regulation was not the big issue. That was instead the clause in his contract giving MSI the freedom to agree a move for Tevez elsewhere, without the Hammers having any legal way of stopping him. West Ham hid this damning evidence of foul play from the league officials at the time of his arrival in East London, and thus, despite the bafflement, the pair got underway in the Premier League. By no means was it a perfect start in Europe for Tevez, who had joined a team in freefall. Both he and Maturano were finding it difficult. Tevez was struggling to adapt to London life and seemed undedicated in training, while the midfielder couldn't keep up with the pace of the English top flight. Making his debut on the 10th of September 2006, the Claritin Blues went on a brutal nine-game winless streak, eight of which they lost, and in seven, they hadn't found the back of the net at all. Though manager Alan Pardew had an infectious excitement about them at the time, integrating the South Americans into the starting eleven was harder than anticipated, and as results nosedived, criticism skyrocketed. Frustrations for the 32 ensued in November, throwing a tantrum when subbed off, for which he faced a club fine, and his teammates set a punishment of having to wear a Brazil shirt, which as a native of their biggest adversary, he refused. MSI had been linked with a takeover of the Hammers twice before, but failed to agree upon a price, and instead, a change of ownership came in November 2006, when Egert Magnusson, the president of the Football Association of Iceland, bought West Ham for £85 million. Losing to Chesterfield in the League Cup, dropping out of the UEFA Cup, 
and taking the Clariton Blues on their worst run of defeat in over 70 years, Pardew was sacked in December. Nestled in the relegation zone, Alan Kirbishley, who had held the role of head coach for 15 years at Charlton, was seen as the man to rescue West Ham from the championship. Initially, this appointment spelled out bad news for Carlos, as Kirbishley hated a poor attitude. Yet following a 6-0 thrashing in Reading, the pragmatist upped the Argentines' game time, hoping that his God-given gifts would shine through. Finally, he ended his drought in March, six months in. Onwards, Tevez found his Premier League shooting boots, converting chances in the next two consecutive games, winning favour with the famously fervent Hammers. It gets better and better for West Ham United and for Carlos Tevez. A consolation goal versus Chelsea was succeeded by some bad news, as West Ham's illicit activity caught up with them. Maturano's move to Liverpool in the winter window sparked a process of tribunal, and after a two-day hearing, the club pled guilty to the partial third-party ownership, which the league had investigated and deemed unlawful. Therefore, in the second week of May, West Ham were handed a £5.5 million fine by the Premier League's independent commission. Fortunately for the Irons, who were clawing at the rim of the relegation pit, they avoided a points deduction, and despite media rumours, Tevez's contract wasn't terminated. Relief flooded the bowling ground as they held on to their informed marksmen, who clearly outranked the side, and while they could, the Hammers made sure he felt their love. A winning brace to brush aside Bolton in the penultimate game of the season was blown out the water a week later, when the relegation threatened East Enders trekked north to Old Trafford, desperate to salvage as many points as possible from the champions. Heavily against the odds, the Argentine forever endeared himself to the travelling fans with a 45th minute goal. And Tevez scores! It was bound to be him! Which was left unanswered by the Red Devils, pocketing the vital three points to secure their place in the top flight, dubbed the Great Escape. Instantly, his long stretch of the score sheet was forgotten, as his seven goals, all scored inside the last ten fixtures, had saved the Clariton Blues and baptised Tevez as an eternal icon of West Ham. Sheffield United, who finished 18th, were understandably infuriated by their relegation, robbed of a spot in the Prem by a side whose illegal forward played a key role in creating the critical three-point margin. Following a failed appeal for reinstatement to the league, the Blades took West Ham to court, seeking damages, which went on for nearly two years. Eventually, in March 2009, a settlement was negotiated, which ordered the Hammers to pay £20 million to Sheffield as compensation. In the wake of the Great Escape, amidst transfer discussion, MSI paid £2 million directly to West Ham, for the release of Tevez from his contract, and a loan was finalised, sending the Argentine north to the most successful English club of all time. In Manchester, alongside players of his calibre, El Apache continued to grow his profile, adding engaging chapters to his storied life, and polarising both fans and colleagues along the way. A costly, confused affair. Tevez to West Ham has gone down as one of the most suspicious and infamous transfers in modern British history, signifying a change regarding the finances of football and how economics would soon have a chokehold on the people's game. <laughs>